All right, let's have some fun with HTMX. And um, this is a sample uh, UI pattern that you've probably seen before. But you have a drop down, you select something on this guy, and it changes uh, the drop down somewhere else. So notice that all these change when I selected uh, one over here, a maker over here. So how do we do this? And how do we do this without write, having to write any JavaScript code? Well, hopefully, oh, well, thankfully, sorry, um, we found uh, HTMX, which does that for us. And I'm going to show you all the code I had to do, both on the server side and on the client side, so you can get this uh, example to work properly for you. Okay, so <clears throat> um, let's go through the, let's go look at the code. And here in the code, we're going to notice that this is this is a Flask a template of index.html. So 90% uh, of it is just straight up HTML, and then little 10% of it is a little bit of Flask uh, templating that is going to allow us to do some cool things also. But let me go through it line by line and show you what we need to do. The first line up here is uh, we want to add the script, the HTMX script. Uh, that's pretty standard. We have some styling for my uh, for my drop downs, and um, and then we come down to my two drop downs separated by divs. My first one is my maker or my uh, um, and and really uh, the the magic here of HTMX is these new attributes that it has. So this ht I mean hx dash get uh, dash target and dash indicator all are all the magic we need to get this to work. What's going to happen is when you select an option on this drop down, it's going to call the slash models URL assigning uh, the value to the name make selected. Okay. Um, if it takes too long, we're going to get an indicator, a spinning uh, indicator. But um, ultimately, what, would, what it will do is it will return some HTML code, and we need to put it someplace. And this H HX target um, lets us know where to put it. It says put it in uh, uh, inside the inner HTML of the uh, DD models, which is down here in the bottom. That's our uh, second drop down, and and our second drop down, uh, of course, its ID needs to be DD models because it's it's got a master one uh, for our target, um, and then it's all all it has to do is generate the uh, options or the models that are specific for that particular uh, maker. And, and that's it for all, I mean, there's, there really isn't much code. Um, this for loop basically, um, and, and this one up here actually, uh, requires a maker's, um, list or a model's list. And all it does, it generates enough options, uh, to specify either all the makers or, or enough, uh, options to specify all the models. And let me show you what I mean by that. Let's switch over to the browser. And look at the code, source co source code, and uh, you'll notice that you know everything else is is you know the the, the header has the uh, script that we need, HTML script, uh, the styling that we had, um, and then notice here that our select is exactly the same, but our options are expanded out. So these are all our makers that we happen to have in our database, and then at the bottom here. There is the models uh, for the first maker that we happen to have at the top of our list, and so this is really our our uh, HTML, our index.html file. That's what it looks like once it's been rendered on the server. It gets uh, transferred to the client, and the, this is what the client sees. It doesn't see those four loops anymore. So <clears throat> let's do one more thing kind of point out a little bit more magic here. So let's uh, click on this and 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 let's select Ford. And I made one mistake. Uh, let's do a control shift I. And now let's con let's select Ford. And what we're going to look at is network traffic generated. So notice that make select is equal to Ford. That's exactly what we wanted. We can go back to the code and look at that. 
but make selected. We want it to be equal to whatever the, the maker we selected, which is forward in our case. And then when we click on it, notice that it returns all the models for the maker forward. Ta-da, it's right here. And also notice that this thing got changed and they're all the same. So how did I make that work on the flash side or on the server side? Well, on the flash side, let me go back up here. We really only serve three things. We serve the uh, either the root or the root index.html. It basically returns the exactly same content. The URL slash models, uh, that's, that's what gets triggered when you select a particular uh, maker. And then finally, uh, our, our JavaScript. And, and this is the easiest one to set up. So in Flask, when you create the Flask object, you give it a static URL path, and then you say slash static, if that's where you want to put it. Um, and then the next five lines, uh, I read in my database from my car.csv file. Where did I get that from? Well, it's right here. It's not very interesting, but if you want to get your own... Um, you can use get data, which actually scrapes it from Wikipedia and uh, gets all the SUV uh, utilities. And yes, there is a rooster crowing in the background. It's my wife's. <laughs> uh, it will be soup one of these days. And so, um, and, and, and we basically make a uh, internal dictionary uh, that will keep both our makers and their corresponding models together okay so the next uh the next thing we want to look at is line 17 which is our ur which handles our url uh models and um i define a template here and, and notice here I'm, I'm looking for that make selected that's again back to the index.html that's this guy right here again uh he has the one that has been selected and i'm going to look it up in my database and and it's going to return all the models that I need for that. And I'm going to pass in the ver the Python variable models to the template variable models, and that's this guy right here. Okay, and this happens to be my template string. So this guy render template string is going to take all that information and actually generate exactly what we need, and it's going to return it back to the browser. And that, my friends, is this piece of magic right here. All these eyes got generated by that one call. Ta-da! And that got placed over here. And, uh, of course, you might recognize this, too. Here, this code, I copy-pasted it from my index.html. This is actually this code right here. Ta-da! You know, why, why, why do things twice, you know? Um, that just saved me a little bit of typing. Okay, the next one, the next thing we handle is the root or the root slash, uh, I mean the root in index.html. And so all I do is I grab my makers and uh, basically it's all my database's keys and I sort them alphabetically, of course. And then I grab the first one and I grab all the models for the first one and I have two lists. And so my variable models, Python, variable models becomes my template variable models and my python variable makers becomes my template variable makers and that's all in index.html where does that go well if you're in flask that should be in the directory templates called index.html because this is called index.html and so um that guy is the guy that i started with Ta-da! and now you're done so I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, please add a comment. If you have better styling for this guy up here, please tell me, give it to me. Uh, and uh, don't, you know, just don't be mean about it. <laughs> and, um, you know, if you see any errors or if you want to add some more content or if you want me to do a different example for HTMX, uh, let me know and I'll be happy to crank another one out. All right, you guys have a great day and forgive the rooster for crowing, please. All right, bye.